Hey there, I'm Michael from CodeCloud. Welcome to this lesson from our AWS Cloud Practitioner Certification Course. In this video, we'll help you build a strong foundation in cloud computing with AWS. So if you wanna learn more or go deeper, check out the full course details below and let's get started. All right, welcome back. We are now gonna talk in the core AWS services section about management services. So a few things to consider. What do we mean by management services? Like, what does that even talk about? So these are services that help manage other services or they provision or optimize other AWS services. So it's like, hmm, what does that mean, Michael? What do you mean by manage? I mean, it means it helps them do different things than what they can do natively. These are also services that help create other services or somehow make them better. <laughs> so let's talk about what that is. Um, there are many of these, by the way. So just like the database section, remember, you just need to kind of learn the one liner on each page. Okay. So here's the question that this solves. How do we create AWS services? So imagine you want to create AWS services, but you need a thousand of them. So you need a thousand virtual machines, or maybe it's a hundred virtual machines and 300 Dynamo databases. What if you could write them into a file, like you were just ordering food, but you could answer the questions like, you know, I want a hamburger and I want it with cheese and I want it to be medium well and no pickles. And what if you could do it like that? Or maybe it was plates of basmati rice, or maybe it's hot dogs. But what if you could just write your order down into a file, give it to AWS and have them create that? Well, guess what? There's a service for that. It's called CloudFormation. So CloudFormation basically creates other services using files that you give CloudFormation. So if you see CloudFormation on the left, that's the green icon. You see all of these services on the right-hand side. What if you could take all of these and put them into a flat file, feed it to CloudFormation, and CloudFormation would create all of this for you, and you wouldn't have to click through the console. You wouldn't have to try and figure out the command line. You just literally give CloudFormation a file. It interprets the file. Maybe it asks you a few questions. And the next thing you know, it creates your entire infrastructure that you need for your project right there. This is what CloudFormation does. It creates other services. It provisions them using files. So CloudFormation is explicitly designed so that you can in mass create all the AWS services you want and it keeps track of the state of the things that you create. So then, if we now know how to provision services on AWS, what if we create a bunch of virtual machines and we want to install software on them? What service do we use for that? Well, what if you want a web server, an application server? What if you stand them up with CloudFormation? What if you need to install like specific things into them, right? specific software? So, so in this case, let's say it's our web, our app, and our database. How do we get Nginx? How do we get Java? How do we get MySQL or Microsoft's SQL server into these virtual machines or containers that we've created? How do we do that? Well, this is what OpsWorks is for. So OpsWorks is a tool that allows you to custom create packages or software layers and install that software into your servers. So OpsWorks allows you to install software at the web level, at the app level, at the database level, any level that you want to define, OpsWorks will allow you to basically install software into these systems. Now, a word of warning, CloudFormation can also be used to install software into servers, but it wasn't really built for that and it's kind of janky, it's kind of weird. OpsWorks can also create and provision AWS services but just like CloudFormation is not that great at installing software into servers, OpsWorks is not great at doing CloudFormation's job. So just be aware that there is some cross-pollination there, but mainly remember that CloudFormation is for provisioning AWS services and OpsWorks is for installing software into either virtual machines or containers. Now here's another question in the management services arena. If you launched a fleet of a thousand servers, how do you manage, inventory, patch, update all these servers and all the services that maybe go with them, like auto-scaling, for example? So if you need to patch your virtual machines, and this, by the way, is regardless of whether they're in AWS or not, 
or maybe you just need an inventory of all the services, software, applications that are installed on all of them. How do you do that? Well, this is what Systems Manager was designed for. Systems Manager is a secure end-to-end -end fleet management solution for not just virtual machines on AWS, or even just virtual machines in your on-premise environment, which you can also manage, but it's also for managing all the services that typically go with these virtual machines or containers. Systems Manager has got 22 subservices underneath it, and it's really an operationalization. It's built to help people manage their operations at scale. But it's a Systems Manager. That's what it's called. So another question that can lead to a service here is, how do I manage all of my AWS accounts as if they're one account? I personally have worked at a business where there were 700 AWS accounts for that one business, 700 plus. How do you pay for all of that in one view? How do you do security on that? What if you have hundreds of accounts? How do you pay the bills of them? How do you make sure, by the way, that security and governance is happening across all these accounts? How do you get them into alignment with you, the needs of your business? Well, when you have multiple AWS accounts and you need to manage them in mass, this is 100% what AWS organizations, which is the name of the service, is used for. This is used to centrally govern and manage multiple AWS accounts and kind of get them into alignment. So that way you can get governance around your billing, you can get governance around security, you can restrict access to services that are not important for your business. Organizations is the account organizer. What if, continuing on, you wanted to offer the templates that you use for CloudFormation or the templates maybe that you use for like a third party like Terraform? What if you wanted to offer them to your employees like they could just get them like a vending machine? So imagine you've got developers and they need to get access to virtual machines for proof of concept testing or maybe databases for proof of concept testing. What if you want employees to use certain services, but you want them to provision and order them themselves? What if you want to make it, by the way, that they can order whatever they want, but as long as it's within your company guidelines? So there's a service that allows you to turn your AWS services into pre-configured, pre-installed vending machines so that you can just grab virtual machines, you can grab databases. This is called the AWS Service Catalog. And you have to create portfolios of products that you want to offer to your employees, but then you can literally just assign them to users and say, hey, you on project A, you can request as many MySQL databases as you want up to five <laughs> or whatever other limits. So it allows you to take your CloudFormation and your Terraform, like they're, you're provisioning your creation templates, and you can turn them into a vending machine for your users on AWS so they can order those T3 large virtual machines, or they can get the uh, EKS cluster they're looking for, or they can get a MySQL database. Next service, how do I manage multiple accounts using AWS organizations, but I wanna do it in a way that is best practice. Like I wanna set it up in the way that AWS recommends. I don't wanna just set up organizations, I wanna do it the best recommended way possible. So, if you want to manage multiple accounts in the best way possible and you're new to AWS and you want to set it up the way that AWS recommends, this is where you don't just use organizations, you use something called Control Tower. And what Control Tower does is it's a service that sets up organizations, it sets up single sign-on, it sets up a bunch of auditing tools, and it puts them into best practice arrangement so that you can just worry about looking at the logs, tracking and setting up your compliances, you don't have to worry about making sure that auditing is turned on, that people can get access to the accounts when they need them, that you've got compliance rules in place. Control Tower sets all of that up for you based on questions that it asks. Now, Control Tower, by the way, will get you about 80 or 90% there. Just know that you will have to take the rest of the 10% based on your business's individual needs. So, but Control Tower is pretty amazing as a management service. All right, here's another pair of services that very much work together. And so how do you manage and audit your accounts for malicious activity and then track any changes that people make into your account? 
Like, what if you want to see if someone logged in as that root user that we said not to use, and they deleted all your non-production services, which, by the way, that has happened to me. And what if you want to make sure no one opens up any firewalls around your virtual machines? And that would cause a security breach. Like, what if you wanted forensically to be able to audit and track all changes and who made those changes in your environment? Well, this is where two services come in. There's AWS Config, which has a misleading name because it actually doesn't do configuration. It tracks configuration changes. And then there's CloudTrail, which is an auditing tool that tracks all logins and all API calls to your AWS account. Now, you got to remember this. Remember, everything against your AWS account, whether it comes from the management console, the command line, or software development kit, is an API call. So you can literally see everything that's done against your account in CloudTrail. And if someone all of a sudden decides to change a firewall from closed to open, Config will register that. And you can not only send notifications with Config, you can literally immediately shut down the firewall. You can create what they call remediation rules to fix the very thing that you didn't want to just happen. So config is very powerful because you can create reactionary rules in reaction to things that have changed. These two services, AWS Config and AWS CloudTrail, very powerful for auditing. They do get turned on when you use that control tower service that we just talked about. Um, but just know that in general, even if you don't use control tower, you want to make sure that these are up and active. Here's a few other services that don't need the same depth as what we just skimmed in our previous slides but are worth noting because they could show up on the exam and they could also be very useful to you. One, what if you need a, a wizard or a guide to walk you through the steps for installing, say, SAP on AWS? Well, Launch Wizard does that. It has a bunch of applications that it supports, but it basically walks you through how to set up third-party applications on AWS in, in a best practice way. What if you had a license, for example, with Red Hat? And I'm going to pick on Red Hat for a second because I used to work for them. And you want to track all of your RHEL instances and you don't want to deploy more RHEL, more Red Hat Enterprise Linux instances in your AWS account than you have licenses for. Well, License Manager will allow you to track the number of licenses that you've deployed. And you can actually set up License Ma Manager to stop the launch of further licensed operating systems in your AWS account. So it's pretty cool. There's Compute Optimizer, which is another management service that tells you how to optimize the way that you are using your virtual machines, your containers, and your serverless functions. That's pretty cool. And it will tell you, you know, how to right size and what to change. Then there's Trusted Advisor, which is a best practice advisor, especially when you have a higher support plan. It will tell you when you are not following best practices, it'll also let you know when you could be exposed. Uh, and a lot of enterprises don't see this until they obtain a business or above support plan. But Trusted Advisor is a pretty useful tool for letting you know if you're like get, getting close to quotas or if you opened a firewall. There's also other services that you can use with this, but it's pretty good. Then there's Resource Explorer, which allows you to explore and discover everything you have running on AWS, which is very useful. And then, of course, you have the Resource Group and Tag Editor, because tagging is still king in 2023. Just like in Kubernetes and other services, we are still tagging things so that we can manage them, report on them, and categorize them. So the Resource Group and Tag Editor is very useful for tagging resources so that, you know, that your finance team or even your operations team can correctly identify what's production, what's non-production, what belongs to a project, which doesn't belong to a project. So these services are actually still remarkably useful. So in summary, there are many management services used to manage other AWS services. CloudFormation and OpsWorks are used to create AWS service objects and install software in them, while Systems Manager is used to manage and configure fleets of services and virtual machines, and potentially containers as well. Organizations and Control Tower are all about how you set up multi-account management and, and setup for AWS accounts. And AWS Config and AWS CloudTrail are basically configuration tracking and API logging tools and tracking tools 
that are used to audit your account and make sure that nothing malicious is going on. There are other management tools like the launch wizard that we talked about or any of the tagging tools, but these are the main ones. So be prepared because the exam could cover any of these particular um, services, but just know that if you take the practice exam, you're probably gonna be pretty covered for getting prepped for these services. If you're ready to take your cloud skills to the next level, don't miss our complete AWS Cloud Practitioner certification course on CoCloud. With hands-on labs, interactive games, and all the guidance you need to ace the exam, you'll be well on your way to certification. So click the link below to join the course today.